good morning, guys. Ooh, I'm a little wild with this camera. So, uh, well, this morning is really fun. a horse critter. He, he blends in totally. You can't see him at all. But it's been really foggy in Oklahoma. Well, in our area in Oklahoma the last several days. And uh, today it's frozen. But that's fine. I'm actually uh, got a few chores to do today. But first, I'll uh, I got water. Alright guys, so you saw what I do every morning. I like to uh, I don't know, show a little bit of routine, of course, but uh, just so you know, I sacrificed my nose to pet that coon dog today. I'm just kidding. I pet him every day, but he really stinks. He smells awful. But, um, yeah, that's true for you. But anyway guys, I am making bread today. It is the 23rd of December. It is my great granny's birthday. Happy heavenly birthday, Granny Hacker. Um, and throw a oldie but goodie picture in. But I'm gonna make bread. Now I don't recall her making bread, but bread is something I really enjoy making actually. And uh, you know, after I had Haston, and he was five weeks premature. So we had some issues. I had to cut back a lot on what I eat because he's a breastfed baby. So I cut out dairy, eggs, almost all sugar, and um, anything that would upset my stomach or that likes to make you poop. Uh, I had to cut all that out because it bothered him really bad. And he was an exclusively breastfed baby. And here he's almost a year old. And just in the last few weeks, really, like... I think about seven or eight weeks now is when he started drinking other things so I'll just I'll show you how I make bread I start out I have eight cups of flour here and then I have an extra cup to knead my bread on and I threw this scoop in there because it was still in my 25 pound bag of flour and I also have this little bowl a flour left over from this morning and it'll go into a container so I don't know if I ever showed you guys what my canisters are or not but I'm pretty proud of these little doodads I've got this big old glass barrel and I use it for flour this is an, a vintage Pyrex canister and it has brown sugar in it and then I have a uh, a half gallon dray jar and I keep popping corn in it we love fresh popcorn and then I've got this really cool Kerr self sealing and I use it to keep sugar in it for Matt's coffee so and that lid is old also and it doesn't seal I don't seal it on there or anything but but yeah oh and this here it is an old measuring cup 
for even flow formula. And I like old stuff. That's all there is to it. I like old stuff. Alright, I'm going to scoot some stuff out of the way. And for this bread recipe, like I said, it has no artificial sugars or sweeteners in it. And it has no milk or eggs. So it took a lot of allergens out because we didn't know what Hey Hey could have and what he couldn't. So, and this is eight cups of all-purpose flour. I don't make it with self-rising because I can use all-purpose for more, but I know how to make all-purpose flour into self-rising flour, so yeah. So, first thing, two teaspoons of salt. A tablespoon and a half of instant yeast. You can use active dry yeast, but I use instant. I like it better. See if my big old spoon will fit in there. And it won't. So instead of using a tablespoon, I can use three teaspoons to make a tablespoon. One, two, there's my tablespoon. And I need another half of a tablespoon, so one and a half. If I can screw it on there straight. An important thing about this is you refrigerate active or instant yeast after you open it, otherwise it loses its reactions. Big spoon. And mix it together. Alright, so I'm going to flour. I'm doing it on top of aluminum foil because I'm going to use my stove soon again. And I don't want to have a big mess. As you can see, my flour in that cup is still a little bit cold. But that's okay. Make sure you flour your hands pretty well too. Otherwise, you're going to have stuff all over them. So, just... Plop your dough out onto your flour. Anything extra in the bowl, you can scrape out if you want. You really don't have to. I usually do because I don't like to waste it. So You'll want to knead your bread for 8 to 10 minutes by hand or I think about 6 minutes in a mixer. Um, the recipe that I'm going to share will tell you uh, exactly how long. I can do it by feel at this point, so. so we'll get to kneading.
All right, so you want it to be a nice, smooth consistency and pretty soft to the touch. Um, it'll be nice and elastic, but it'll still hold its shape well. You can see it's pretty elastic, but it's not, you don't see any tears really. Need it a couple more times. And then I'll put it back in the bowl that I mixed it in. Alright, my house is a tiny bit cold, so it's going to have to rise a little bit longer than usual. But I'll throw it in the bowl. And I cover it with a towel. And it needs to sit and rise for about an hour. A um, little longer, a little less, depend or well, at least an hour. If it's cool or you're, it's damp, it's not going to rise as easy. So we'll just leave it covered and it'll start doing its thing. All right, well, I hate having this glass door. There's only one good thing about it. I always rise my bread in the window. So as you see, it's probably doubled at least. I'm gonna let it rise a few more minutes. Well, a few more minutes. Uh, probably 10 or 15 more minutes and then we'll start separating it. All right, fresh sheet of aluminum foil. Sprinkle. And I would say that is a bowl full of bread. So just have to kind of gently peel it. It'll be pretty warm. Right this way. Horribly right handed. I always scrape the inside of the bowl too. No sense of wasting any of it. Now once it's at this point you can make it into bread rolls or whatever size loaf pan you want. I have two um, glass loaf pans over here. So all we'll do is nice it's still very, very sticky where you have to cut the dough pretty much um, where it was pulled from the side. a big mess but some sprinkle on top we'll need it just a little more pretty much folding it and fighting with this aluminum foil I usually do it on top of saran wrap but my stove was warm from cooking so you can't use saran wrap Okay, so we've got a nice size dough ball. And what I'm going to do is fold it over one more time, pick about middle, and you crease it down. And that's where you separate it. Now there is a tool to do this. And there's people who will say, don't tear the dough. But this is how I do it. 
and then I roll it a few times into itself before I put it into a well greased loaf pan. Pretty much like so. One more time. It gets real tough and real stout and still very, very sticky. I got a couple of little glass loaf pans. Drop it in there, like so. And take the other piece. All right, I preset the oven to 375. It's now at temperature, and my bread has doubled. So you bake them. 375 for 25 minutes. Oops, sorry guys. I'm sure I didn't show you guys my super cute little baking assistant right here. That would be butter. That's popping. He is a Cheerio monster. What are you doing, hey? You gonna share Cheerios? You got Cheerios? Uh huh. You like Cheerios? All right. So 20 minutes have passed since I put this bread in the oven. This is the ugliest bread I've ever made, guys. Like, I'm not really sure it's bread. It's huge, and I probably should have turned. That big mound I had into three loaves, but I only did two. Silly me, I guess. But, mm, I gotta pull it out. Um, after it's baked for between 20 and 25 minutes on average, you butter it and then bake it for about five more minutes and pull it out. And I, you don't have to butter if you don't want to. I butter mine, but, um, you know, it just depends on who you're baking it for. If it's somebody who has a dairy allergy, don't butter it. But, otherwise, I do. It's just what I do. Alright guys, are you prepared for the world's ugliest loaf of bread? And, the first runner up. Alright, if you got one of them little thingamajigs that you use to brush on stuff, that's awesome. If not, you can use a paper towel, like I'm doing here. Okay. Alright, once we're sufficiently buttered, open the stove back up, the oven, excuse me, let them bake for about five more minutes and then when they come out they will be golden brown all right five minutes is up two of the ugliest loaves of bread I've ever baked but they'll also I guess feed an army with one loaf, really, guys. I, uh, like I said, these are these are for Christmas. So, and I have a Christmas party today, and uh, that one loaf is going to the other one is going to wait till Christmas Day, and you know, then we'll we'll get to enjoy these these very Grinchy, ugly <laughs> bread. <laughs> it should taste just fine, though. But anyway guys, thanks for thanks for watching. Like I said, I will include a link to the recipe in the description. And uh, you know, there's Hey hey. And uh, we appreciate all of your your views, your comments, your likes, all of our subscribers. 
I actually got to meet a couple subscribers, which was pretty awesome, you know, for, uh, they said they feel like they're meeting celebrities and, you know, we just feel like we're meeting new people. But thanks guys. Thanks for everything. We're going to enjoy this loaf of, one loaf of bread tonight and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon.